Hello, beloved. Today is Tuesday of the second week of Advent, December 7th, 2021. Have you ever met someone who claimed to be without sin? Were you fooled? No. According to the Apostle John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And I would add, that's about it. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 66, beginning at verse 1. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of His name. Give to Him glorious praise. Say to God, How awesome are your deeds! So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in His deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us, you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 344 in Lutheran Service Book, On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist Cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of kings. Then cleansed be every life from sin, Make straight the way for God within, And let us all our hearts prepare For Christ to come and enter there. We hail Thee as our Saviour, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without Thy grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. Lay on the sick thy healing hand, And make the fallen strong to stand. Show us the glory of thy face, Till beauty springs in every place. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, Whose advent sets thy people free, Whom with the Father we adore, And Holy Spirit evermore. Today's reading is from the first letter of St. John, the first and second chapters. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, 
our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know Him, if we keep His commandments. Whoever says, I know Him, but does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps His word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in Him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, 
when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to them who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and give thanks to God for St. Ambrose of Milan, pastor and hymn writer. We turn again to Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Ambrose was born into a Christian family in Trier in A.D. 340. He followed his father's footsteps as a civil servant of the empire, and about 372 he was named the governor of the Roman province whose capital was Milan. He proved quite popular. He had been governor for but two years when the bishop of the city died, and he was acclaimed, to his shock, the new bishop. He was still a catechumen, had not yet been baptized, and had never really studied theology. Yet the crowd would not be denied. Within the week, Ambrose was hurriedly baptized, consecrated a deacon, ordained a presbyter, and then consecrated bishop on December 7th. 374. He would later protest that the congregation had to be patient with him, as he was learning, even as he was required to teach. Nevertheless, despite this irregularity, Ambrose proved to be the first of the great Latin doctors of the Church, the others being Saints Augustine, Jerome, and Gregory the Great, a theologian of highest rank. He strongly opposed Arianism from the first. He used his Greek-speaking background to study extensively the Eastern Fathers in their biblical commentaries and theological treatises. He soon showed himself a faithful bishop and servant of Christ, and his sermons utilized to the full his classical learning. He was not afraid to stand up to Emperor Theodosius when needed, the instance of the famous massacre at Thessalonica shows this. The emperor, in a fit of rage, had ordered thousands slaughtered. Ambrose met him at the door of the church in Milan and barred his entrance until he had publicly repented in the manner of King David. Ambrose is also famous for his Catechesis of Augustine. The learning of the Bishop of Milan brought Augustine and company to repentance and to the washing of baptism. A medieval legend even attributes the text of the Te Deum Laudamus to the two great men at the time of Augustine's baptism at Ambrose's hand. While that is only a legend, it is true that Ambrose introduced into the West a form of antiphonal singing that remains quite popular. The great Advent hymn, Savior of the Nations Come, is attributed to him, and witnesses a decidedly anti-Aryan confession of Christ. The form of office hymn is due directly to Ambrose's influence. He died April 4, 397, in Milan. Let us pray. O God, you gave your servant Ambrose grace to proclaim the gospel with eloquence and power. As bishop of the great congregation of Milan, he fearlessly bore reproach for the honor of your name. Mercifully grant to all bishops and pastors such excellence in preaching and fidelity in ministering your word, 
that your people shall be partakers of the divine nature. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.